I was greatly shocked and sad Monday night to learn of the death of Mrs. Lewis Allen at her home here after but a short illness, which was not considered dangerous, but she apparently was convalescing until the sudden turn for the worse. Sunday afternoon, when the silent messenger of death stilled the cheery voice of the loved one. And death came at about 11 o'clock Sunday night, no. resulting from a sort of bronchitis and slight that says affection of the heart. She had been confined to her bed for 10 days or two weeks, but no one seemed to realize the seriousness of her sickness, although Mrs. Allen had apparently given up hope and seemed to feel it was her last sickness and her condition more serious than was apparent. Besides the husband, Mr. Lewis Allen, five sons, John L., Will, Thomas, Frank, and Dave, and three daughters, Gertrude, Queen, and Mrs. Molly Hicks. The entire family, with the exception of the son Will and Mrs. Molly Hicks, were present at her bedside during her illness and when the end came. The son Will and daughter of Mrs. Hicks were notified of her death. Will arrived yesterday to be present at the funeral, but Mrs. Hicks, who lives in Fall River Basin, was unable to come on account of sickness of her family of little ones. The funeral service was held today by Reverend Reese of the Congregational Church of this place as a mark of esteem in which the deceased was held. Interment was made in the little cemetery on the hill east of town where the mound of earth marked her resting place. Every person in our little town and community feels the loss of this esteemable, esteemable um, woman extremely. Always ready to comfort or minister unto the sick or do what she could do to make the path of those about her brighter. Time alone may soften the suffering and anguish of the hearts that are lonely in that house this evening, but the love and absence of that cheery voice are ever present reminders and can never be replaced of the best and truest friend on earth, a mother. The sympathy of this entire community goes out to each member of the family in their hour of sorrow. Mrs. Lewis Allen was born in Leadville, Colorado, May 17, 1861, and moved to Wyoming with her parents in 1876. On August 11, 1879, she was united in marriage to Lewis Allen in Sweetwater County. To this union, ten children were born, eight of whom survived. Mr. and Mrs. Allen have been residents of this section for almost I'll see you all when I see you. I see you. The family, Lewis, Helena, and all the kids. This is in 1901, I believe. Mm -hmm. 02 when they had the the uh, 
the store in Vernal. And you can't see it, but below here, the picture actually shows their shoes and their they're sitting on buffalo, buffalo hide. Okay, this is kind of the chronological of the whole thing. Lewis marries, she gets the piano. This is Lewis Allen in Lone Tree, Wyoming, which if you turn right and go to Manila, you have to drive through Lone Tree to get up to I-80. That's when they moved to Pinedale. And there's a lot of books written. So your family history is really steeped in the outlaws on this outlaw trail. Um, Lewis Allen, Robert Redford wrote in his book, we dropped into a flat area north uh, near the river where we saw the remains of an old cabin and set several surrounding shacks in varying stages of decay. This, said Bob Allen, is the old Doc Parsons cabin. The Parsons family were among the first settlers to Browns Park around 1858. The cabin was constructed in 1874 along with a smelter for one for ore mined in the region. Doc Parsons died in 1881 and is buried near his cabin, as is his granddaughter. His son-in-law raised and trained purebred horses and sold them to the outlaws. So that's all it says about Lewis. The Masonic Temple in Green River. Lewis Allen built that. So Lewis ended up in Browns Park. He ran away from Salt Lake in uh, 1874 at the ripe old age of 11 years old. <laughs> and went to Rock Springs and was eaten out of garbage cans in Rock Springs when a guy saw him and took a liking to him, threw him on the back of a horse and brought him down to Browns Park where he met a lot of interesting people down here. So here's the cabin that he built. If you, Everybody knows about the piano, right? Sid? Uh, Doc gave this to Helena on her 16th birthday? 13th birthday. 13th birthday here in Browns Park. How'd you like the roads coming in? Weren't they great? Doc great. said at his time they were 15 miles of the worst road in America and I don't think they've changed much. And he bought this piano used out of Denver, a grand piano, and had it shipped out here to Browns Park. Can you imagine somebody playing a piano in a cabin out here? This is my mommy and my daddy. And all you need to do is change this picture with Daryl and Odette, because Daryl <laughs> raised my dad. Daryl was the oldest, my dad was the youngest. So from that lineage back, we're all the same. <laughs> This is your, this is Daryl's mother and Daryl's father, Julia Swenson Tolton Allen, Julia Tolton Swenson Allen, and William Henry. William Henry was Lewis Allen's oldest son. He was born in the cabin that we're going to go look at today, the location, in 1880. Our grandpa was born in 1880. Isn't that amazing? That much. Uh, uh, Jack's history. Uh, Aunt True actually did some homeschooling over in the schoolhouse that was over in this direction. Hey, don't. So there's that building over there by the trees, but that's not the schoolhouse. It's over in that area somewhere. And is there a foundation or anything over there? Maybe stones or. I don't know. I've never. I've never stopped to check it. Um, so you think Lewis and Lewis and Helena uh, moved here? No, Helena never lived here. Oh, never. Oh, this is Lewis. Excuse me. Before, after she, died. after she died. After she died. He 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 didn't live here very long. He was he lived with his daughter and her husband here. Yeah, let's just not worry. Uncle Ray. Just don't touch him. Uh, Lewis's son-in-law actually was a was a let's go look at a trucker. He owned a Model T truck or something. And he trucked a lot of stuff between here and Colorado oh. and here in Utah. But they they lived here for for a while. Hmm. Uh, and uh, I think they moved here from Pinedale. Okay. Lewis did, I know. I mean, when he came to live with them, he came from Pinedale. But, see, they what they've done, they've... They, uh, enlarged the pond. Yeah. That that part wasn't part of the pond. 